Hi, my name is Sebastian Matteau, and in today's video, I would like to show you visual debugging with Python. Now, so what is debugging? Debugging is, of course, a very general term uh, for doing whatever it takes to, to spot and remove the bugs, the mistakes from your code. But what I mean specifically for this video is the use of a debugger tool. And a debugger tool is a, is a tool that allows you to inspect the state of your code before and after it crashes. And that can be super useful as a way to uh, spot bugs. And now the tool that I will use is PDB, the Python debugger, uh, or specifically a slight extension of the PDB, the IPython debugger. Uh, and in one form or another, the, the Python debugger is used as the debugger tool for, I think, every serious debugging uh, uh, system that exists within Python, regardless of the exact editor that you use. So I will use Rapunzel. Uh, Rapunzel is a vi vi provides visual debugging in the sense that it provides a visualization of how the debugger works. Uh, but other editors, for example, such as Spider, do the exact same thing. So the principles that I will explain here uh, largely translate to whatever kind of uh, visual debugger for Python you use. Um, so before we actually start debugging, what are we going to do? So here we have the, the lyrics from a song called uh, Go Get That Money by Zaytoven and uh, Rick Ross. Rick Ross on the chorus. And in the chorus, uh, Rick Ross doesn't only encourage Zaytoven to uh, get the money machine, but to also plug in uh, the money machine. And in doing so, he uses the word money very, very frequently. Go get the money machine, go get the money machine. Um, but as a scientist, I want to go beyond the observation that, we're, that he uses the word money uh, a lot and know exactly what the lexical frequency of the word money in the context of these lyrics is, right? So in terms of percentage points, how, how, how much percentage of all the words in the lyrics is actually the word money? Um, and even more so, how does that relate to the other words in the lyrics? So if we rank order all the words that occur in these lyrics, at which position is the word money? Is it the most used word? Is it the second most used word, etc.? So I want to do, do a very basic analysis of the words in these lyrics. And for that, I created a, a program called lyrics.py. And lyrics.py is, of course, broken because we're going to uh, debug it. Um, but... Uh, uh, and the purpose of this video is to show you how debugging works, not to show you exactly how this code works, but I will nevertheless very briefly walk you through the functions so that you have some idea of the structure of the code. But don't worry if you don't completely follow it because that's not, a, not the, point of the point of the video. So um, we have a few functions. I'll briefly explain all of them. The function word percentage takes a word, for example, money, and takes a list of all words in the lyrics, lyrics, and it returns how much in percentage points uh, the word occurs in the lyrics, right? So for example, if 1% of all the words is money in the lyrics and we ask the word percentage for money, it would return one. Then we have another function, words percentages, and it basically does that for all the words in the lyrics. So it takes a list of words, a list called lyrics of all the words in the lyrics, um, and it creates using a dict comprehension, which I will not explain. I have a video on dict comprehensions if you're interested. But basically what this does in a very sweet expression is create a dictionary where the keys are the words and the values are the percentage frequencies for the words uh, for all the words in the lyrics, right? So we have to get a dictionary of words that map on to their frequencies in percentages. That's what word percentages does. Now, as you know, a dictionary in Python is not necessarily uh, ordered unless you use an order dict. Um, so to, to rank order them, we have another function, rank ordered words, and it takes uh, this dictionary of, of percentages, right? So this dictionary with words as keys and percentages as values, and it actually turns that in a list because a list does have a well-defined order. And within that list, there are tuples, and each tuple, uh, the first element of each tuple is the word, and the second element of the, of the tuple is the percentage point. So we go from a dictionary representation to a list representation so that we can rank order them. Is that super elegant? Perhaps it is not, but that is not the point of this, of this video. The point is how we're going to debug this. And here we're actually uh, using the function sorted in a clever kind of way. I'm not going to explain that. Uh, but if, you're, if you find it interested, you can try to figure out exactly how this function works and how it actually goes from a dictionary representation to a sorted list representation. Um, but for the purpose of this video, that doesn't really matter that much. Then we have a function, a very basic function, read and split, which takes a path, so file name, uh, and, it, uh, and it reads the, the text from that file and splits it into a list of words and returns that. 
So that's what we're going to get do use get used to uh, get our list of, of words in the lyrics, of course. And then we have sort of the main entry point function, print top words. And print top words takes a path, so the, the file that contains the lyrics. It takes a special word that we want to provide some extra information for. And then a top keyword and the top keyword indicates we're going to print out a list of the most commonly common words in the lyrics. And, and in, if we specify top is 10, we will get the top 10. If we specify five, we get the top five, etc. So what will it do, this function? It will first print out, we will see that once it works. It will say, okay, I'm going to analyze the lyrics from this and this file. Then it will, for the special word, it will say uh, the word money is at position five or whatever. Um, um, so it would be the five most common, fifth most common word. And then it provides, and then finally it will print out the, this, the list, the sort of, the list, the top 10 list of the most common words. Um, exactly how this function works doesn't really, really matter right now because we're going to debug it. And then of course, to start with, um, we call this, we call this function print top words, go get that money.txt and the special word that we're interested in is money. Okay. Oof. Let's just run it and see what happens. So I'm going to click here on the run button and now we're going to run it, not in the debugger, but we're just going to run it. What I will also do is here, um, show the Python workspace explorer. So here on the right, now you will see um, a list, an empty table, currently it's empty, of all the variables that live in the Python workspace. That is very useful for debugging. And also while the debugger is active, we will also be able to see the state of the debugger there. Okay, so let's run it. Just running it, not with the debugger. So I run it and we get an error, a zero division error. Where does it come from? It comes from the word percentage function at uh, line eight. So up, let's scroll up. Here we have a zero division error. Hmm. Okay. Um, so this would be a good moment to start actually debugging, right? So far we've only run the code and we've seen that it crashes, but we're not debugging. So what we can do here in the run, there is a special function, control F5, run file in debugger. And that's what I'm going to do now. Up, run. So you see it, it calls here, uh, RPDB, the R Python debugger, and, and in a slightly different way, it allows us now to execute the code. You see that the Python terminal, the normal Python terminal changes into this IPyDB prompt, which means that we're in the debugger. The first thing that we need to do, so we're starting now, but the program is not immediately executing. The first thing that we need to do is tell the, the debugger to run the code. And we can do that by pressing C, to start execution. Here you see that the C stands for continue. So let's do that. C. Oh. All right. Then it crashes, of course, because invoking the debugger doesn't really solve anything, but at least it allows us to get more information about why it crashes. So we get the zero division error. And now what is very different from before is that we are now in a so-called post-mortem state. You see, we're still, the debugger is still active. You see that here, IPyDB. Um, and if you now look at the workspace here on the right, you see that, um, that we have a few variables that are defined. You see the word, the variable word has the value money and the value lyrics has the value empty string. And now it is important to realize where we are. So right now the program has crashed and it has crashed at this point, right? Line eight. And the state, the workspace that you see here refers to the scope of this function. So right now, what we're seeing here in the workspace is the variables that existed in this function at the moment that the function crashed. So word corresponds to the argument that was passed here. So that's correct. It's the word money. And we see that the lyrics is actually an empty string. So this function was called with, um, not with an actual list of lyrics, but with an empty, empty list. So something is wrong. Something went wrong in getting the, getting the lyrics. That's what we can, we're going to learn here. Um, so what can we do here with the, at the, with the debugger? So right now, as I explained, we are actually sort of inspecting. We're doing post-mortem debugging. The program has died. And what we're doing is now sort of inspecting the dead body of the program. And we're doing that now in the, the part of the program that we're in is the, the, the body of the word percentage function. Uh, but of course, the word percentage function was called from somewhere else. And if we want to know where it was called from, we can go down. So I press D 
then we go, oh, sorry, we can go up, I press U. And then we go to the location where uh, word percentage was called from. Up. Now, and then we jump and you see, this is also where the visual debugging in com comes in. You see that Rapunzel now jumps to that part of the code. It's line 51. And then here in the body of uh, print top words, we were calling word percentages. And now you can see actually that the workspace changes and you see that the, there are now more val variables in the workspace and they correspond to all the variables that live here in the in the in the body of print top words in this scope um, we could even go up one thing one more frame and then we actually go here to the to the main right to just where we called print top words and there actually no variables existed so the workspace is empty but let's go down again into into the function print top words and here you see that lyrics is actually empty and that We've seen that that is probably what causes the mistake, right? Because we're going to count how many words there are in the lyrics. And then we're going to divide how often the word money occurs. And if we divide it by zero, because there are no words in the lyrics, we get a zero division error. So, um, okay. So I think the problem is that the word lyrics is, is the, the, the list of lyrics is empty. And we're creating that here, right? We're calling lyrics, uh, we're calling read and split with the path to get the lyrics. That's probably where things go wrong. Um, so what can we do now? How can we use our debugger even more efficiently and in a more clever way to find out exactly what goes wrong? What we can do now is first I will actually quit the debugger, I will say Q, and then I will go here and I will press F12 or I hear in the run, I will say toggle a breakpoint and you will see a little icon appears next to it. What does this mean? The breakpoint means that we're going to execute our code. If I now execute the code again in the debugger, the code will run until we encounter this line. And that is kind of convenient because then we sort of, we can make our code execute to the point where we're actually interested in seeing what happens. And from there, we can take it one step at a time, literally. Okay, so I set the breakpoint here and then I again say run, run file and debugger. And if I now press C, it will not run until it crashes, but it will run until it encounters that line and it will not yet execute that line, right? So the deep, the, the, the breakpoint doesn't mean the last line that is executed, but the first line that is not executed. Okay, continue up. So now we are here um, and we've sort of paused the program, which hasn't crashed yet. The program is alive, but suspended, so to say. Um, and now we are here. Okay, and we can see that the state of our program in the workspace explorer, we see that the path is go get that money, the special word is money, the top is 10, and those things all correspond to the arguments that we've passed to print top words. And now what we can do is one step at a time, uh, keep executing our code until we have some idea of what goes wrong. And there are actually three ways to tell our debugger to execute the code. The first we've already seen, it's the, the C for continue, right? So just go. Then we have the S for step. And step is the simplest one. It basically means uh, just go to the next line that would be executed. So that's what we're going to do. And if we say S for step, then you see that we actually go into the read and split function. Um, right, so now we are here. And then we say, okay, step more, Up, step more. And then we see, we go one line, one line, one line. And you see how the, the how Rapunzel basically shows us which line we're on, right? By highlighting that line. Um, so that's the second way, right? The S for step. Now, if I would do step now in with open path, that would be very inconvenient because then we would actually dive in to the Python internals um, and we would get, we would have to do a lot of steps until we find out where actually this goes wrong. So there is a, a, a third way to execute the code, the N function, the next. And that basically means uh, go to the next line within the current function. So if I would press N here, and that's what I'm going to do, we're actually not going to dive into how open works, but we're simply going to the next line. And that is essentially what we want to do, All right? So in practice, you will much more often use N um, because otherwise you go deep into the code, deeper, 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 and then it takes a lot of time to debug. Whereas quite often what you want to do is just basically execute lines of codes within your function. And for that, you would use the N, right? I hope that is clear. S is really go to the next line that would be executed. And N would be go to the next line that would be executed at the current level of the code. Up, N. All right, 
And now we see something that is super useful. Um, we get an exception that occurs. It says file not found error. Why is this useful and why is this super cool? You see that we're actually embedding this in a try accept statement. So normally we wouldn't see this exception, right? If we just execute the code, we don't see it. But if we execute the code line by line, we actually do see that exception. And now we're actually trying to figuring out what is going wrong, right? The file that we've specified just doesn't exist. Go get that money doesn't exist. Um, but it does exist, doesn't it? Um, oh no, actually it doesn't. A very trivial mistake. The file is called go get the money, not go get that money. And because I've made the code very sloppy, right? There's just when this exception occurs, we catch it and we return an empty list. That's where things go wrong, right? So it's just a typo. It's always just a typo in the end, right? Okay, next. So then we go here, then we return an empty list. And then we say next. And then we go, oh, uh, yes, next. And then we go to, to go to the next line here, percentages, words, percentages. And there you see, uh, and now we've executed this line. And now if we go to the workspace explorer, you see that lyrics is the empty line. And now we actually have some idea of where this mistake comes from, right? So uh, the function crashed, the, the, the program crashed with a zero division error here in word percentage. But the actual problem arise, arise, comes from read and split and the fact that we just return an empty list rather than, uh, rather than um, that we just return an empty list rather than giving some kind of useful error message if we have a typo in the path. So, um, so what we're going to do, I'm going to clear all the breakpoints, Oop, clear breakpoints, control F12. Um, and now I'm going to scroll down and instead of go get that money, I'm going to say go get that money. It's going to be go get the money and let's just run it now. So I'm going to quit the IPyDB and now just I'm just going to run it to see if it works. Not in the debugger, but just with the regular running routine. So run project or file, oh, execute. All right. And now you see that it works. We've solved our program. So we're analyzing the lyrics from go get the money. The word money is at position two. Uh, the most frequent word is actually the, it always is, of course. Uh, and money is at position two with slightly less used than, uh, than the machine is at position three. You see, we've had a slight sloppiness. We're not stripping the, the punctuation marks, etc., etc. Okay, so what have we seen? We've seen that the Python debugger is a very useful tool and it allows you to do a few things. It allows you to execute the code until it crashes. And then when it crashes, we enter so-called post-mortem mode. Uh, and in post-mortem mode, we can inspect the state of the code uh, as it was when it crashes. And then you can sort of, you can go up and down sort of through the, what is called the call stack. So through the layer of functions that call each other to inspect the state of all of these functions as they were when they crashed. Um, that is post-mortem debugging that you would do after it after the program crashes. In addition, you can set breakpoints. And when you set a breakpoint, you can execute the code until the code reaches that breakpoint. And then you can do more or less the same thing at that moment, namely inspect the code as it is at the moment of that breakpoint. Uh, and then there are three ways to actually execute the code. You have to see the continue statement that says basically run until you encounter a breakpoint or until it crashes or until it finishes. You have the S for go to the next line that would be executed. But the risk of using S is that you will go, you very often go very deep into function calls, into function calls, into function calls, etc. So that's often not what you want. And then we have the, the N statement for next, which means go to the next line of code that would be executed at the current level of the function or higher actually also. Uh, so that avoids you from going very deep into the deep into function calls. And together with a visual debugger that actually shows by going to the correct line in the in the editor, right? So that's what Rapunzel does. If, if, if it crashes, it will go to the line that actually crashes. And then there is a workspace explorer that shows you all the variables and the, and the values that they have at the moment that it crashes or at the moment of the breakpoint, etc. That is very, very useful to, uh, in, or in an intuitive way, uh, do de debug your Python code. Now, so I hope uh, you find this useful and I hope this will make it much easier and much more fun to debug your code because bugs are everywhere and uh, it, it is a skill to learn how to, uh, to find them. All right, thank you very much for your attention.